focus tonight, those red flag laws and the question, how was the suspected shooter able to buy guns even after efforts to strengthen laws in New York? The 7 News I team discovered legal loopholes. These loopholes omit many people from the chain of notification when someone is red flagged. His 7 News investigator Ed Duranch discovered that includes the highest levels of state government. Two minutes and three seconds. They're working on clearing the scene. They're working on clearing the store. They have one individual in custody. Couched in the chaos of Saturday, May 14th. Two minutes and three seconds. Ten people were murdered, three injured. It, it shouldn't be. The suspected shooter was legally able to buy guns despite being known to police over threats made in school. Mental health experts found no cause for concern, but a year later, it's become a nightmare for Pam Pritchett and her family. Her mother, Pearl Young, was killed at Tops on Jefferson Avenue. At the end of the day, if, that, if they have a questionable history, then there's no reason that they should have access to firearms. Since the shooting, red flag laws have been strengthened statewide, allowing more people to file extreme risk protection orders in court. Between January 1st, 2021 and June 28th, 2022, the 7 News I team has discovered at least 34 Western New Yorkers have had their guns taken away between Chautauqua, Erie, Genesee, Niagara, and Wyoming counties. 21 orders have been issued in Erie County alone by judges who found their there is a substantial risk of imminent threat to themselves or another person. But unlike the state's public registry for sex offenders, the issue is there is no one red flag list, no central database to share who has been deemed a risk to the public. So state police, schools, and even the highest levels of state government have no idea who is red flagged. I, I want to know. Absolutely, I want to know. That includes Erie County's District Attorney, John Flynn. Why isn't that happening right now? Well, because there's no law requiring that to happen right now. Under the expanded law, state troopers tell the I-Team the court is required to notify state police, any other law enforcement agency with jurisdiction, the local permit licensing officer, and the Division of Criminal Justice Services. This required notification, though, omits many levels of authority, people you would think would be in the know. Is it a problem that this loophole exists? Sure. I mean, at any time that there's a gap in information um, from those that need to know, it's a huge problem. It, it creates vulnerabilities and creates opportunities for, um, sadly, for individuals like a Buffalo attacker to, to get through the system. Elizabeth Newman is the former Department of Homeland Security Assistant Secretary for Counterterrorism. She served under Presidents George W. Bush and Donald Trump. When you don't have that continuity and that coordination between government and government agencies, what's bound to happen? Oh, there's no way for a system to work if you don't have that interconnectedness. I think there's a compelling case to make that an employer or a school principal has a need to know if an individual has been determined by a judge to pose a risk to themselves or to others. Um, it's great that the weapons have been taken from them, but there's also other ways that people can cause harm. The you DA says the local law enforcement knows about know who's had a red flag order issued against them. They are the ones who go in and remove the guns after the judge's order. Gun dealers would see that information, so would police if that person is pulled over. Shouldn't that go to the highest levels and just be, you know, kind of across the board? Shouldn't there be one level of notification for law enforcement, schools? I mean, all government entities should be working together here. Yes. Would you agree? I agree. We have numerous bodies and we have our magazines and our bullets and everything. Still, without top-down notification, Pritchett feels we're at risk. There definitely needs to be a lot more checks and balances. I'll say this, Ed, I think this is very pivotal, not only in Western New York, but I think it's pivotal in our nation because we are talking about not only gun violence, but we are also talking about white supremacy at the same time. Filing an extreme risk protection order is not easy. It involves a lengthy application process and a lot of evidence. There's a hearing and a judge looks to see if there is an imminent risk. These orders last one year. Now, I mentioned five counties, but did not mention Allegheny, Cattaraugus or Orleans counties. I'm told there hasn't been an extreme risk protection order issued in any of those communities. For the IT My Midge Ranch 7 News.